What's going on guys, Didi Designs here, also known as XGen Didi, and today I have another After Effects tutorial for you guys, and this is going to be the lock-on scope effect that's motion tracked in my most recent edit, the Introducing XGen Fury episode. Here's what it looks like. Okay, as you saw there, it was on the enemy target, and then the lock-on changed to the scope, and then was motion tracked to the scope. So it's, a, it's pretty cool. I like it. So here's how I actually did it. I didn't use any external programs, I didn't use After Effects motion tracking. There is no possible motion tracking that can do that fast. Like that fast and that like sophisticated. So the best way to motion track something like that is literally frame by frame by hand. So that's exactly what I did. If you see here, motion track the uh, target on the body. I know that's all pixelated, but I'm trying to give you a good... Uh, not laggy view here and so it um like halfway in the ADS it switches to the scope and then boom it's on the scope and then it's motion track there so yeah pretty much by hand and how you do that is um I don't want to go too uh, in depth on this it's pretty pretty self-explanatory it's just very time consuming that's the whole that's the whole ordeal it's just time consuming so um find out where you want it to start so I think um, I started this one right here, and it's over here. Don't pay attention to this one. Um, and uh, keyframe the position and the scale. Um, you can do this by like clicking down on the clip and then clicking down on transform and keyframing it there. So now that I have that keyframed, go like a couple frames and then just move it. Just scroll in, and uh, you might have to do this on full, by the way. Just scroll in and if the if the body moves you move the target and then you have to set the scale up and then you just keep doing it frame by frame by frame until you're satisfied I also did it with another clip in here it was at like 108 here's good yeah see look at that. that's a perfect motion track onto the scope here and you can only do that by hand you can't do that with a program so if you're wondering, you know, how to do this the easiest way, this is definitely not the easiest way to do it, but it's the most accurate way, and it'll look the best if you do it this way. It's based on how you make it instead of a program makes it, so. And it's a pretty solid motion track if you do it that way, too, so. Alright, so I will be showing you a, uh, a little shortcut around it, but it's not like this. You can't just, um, you can't just have it on the whole time. You can only have it on like, here, let me show you. This will be what we'll be working with. And it's going to be like the starting point of a clip. Like, um, like say you just had the uh, intro cinematics and this is the starting clip. A little bit before the you know actual beat starts, you put it on this. And it's twixtered and then kill, the beat starts. So, there'll be like a motion track target on here. And then it'll go in and then kill. So pretty cool it's another little just trick I'll show you on how to do it and how to motion track and after effects it's a cool thing to learn how to do in the first place so um, yeah definitely if you want to do an accurate one and you want to keep it on the whole clip do it by hand but if you want to just do the um, the intro kill scope on effects this is how you'll do it but first thing you want to do is make sure that the clip is already edited like this is the last edit you really want to do so, like, say you're about to start it in the beat. Just make sure you got it at the right time. Make sure that kill, right here, that kill is on the, the first beat. And it's already twisted at added speed. If you change that speed, it will ruin the motion track. And that's not what you want. So, last effect you want to do is this motion track. So, say that was my finished clip. I'm just going to go to a new project up here. Let's say this was in the middle of my project. That was my finished clip. And uh, it's already sped so that the uh, beat starts on the kill. So, um, I mean, the twister starts at zero for me. So I can go ahead and start there. So go ahead and navigate to where you want it to start. So where the twister starts. Where it's all slow. By the way, if you don't know what twister is, I'm sorry. This is kind of an advanced tutorial. I'll get more into the basics later on. I no, I should probably start with that. But, yeah, twister is used to slow down clips in uh, a very... Uh, smooth pattern so yeah so this is already twisted out and uh, you want to go to layer new null object 
that's going to be holding the data for the uh, track. Now, most uh, people don't have tracker just automatically on their bar right here, so I'm going to press X on that actually. And so, boom, where's my tracker? Oh my god. You uh, press window and then click tracker, and it should show up somewhere on this bar. I just drag it to the bottom. So, um, again, go where you want to start, where the trick starts, and then click uh, on the clip that you're going to be tracking. Click track motion. This little track point shows up here. And um, just click um, where you see the four cross arrows. Hold click and move it to somewhere inside of the black scope that you see um, like lightness or a smudge. I see a smudge right there. So hopefully that'll motion track it right. You might have, this might take trial and error. It does for me all the time. But I think this might go through all right. So to motion track that, you're going to click analyze forward. And you want to click you want to click stop analyzing when you want it to stop motion tracking so pay attention so I clicked it and um, also pay attention to make sure it's making a proper track um, it might be a little wiggly yeah see that's not a proper track we don't want that so um, just a good example of trial and error so I'm glad I kinda messed up there so just, just highlight it and delete it and then you see track motion again just come over here and we'll find a different spot so I hope that's not the same spot. <laughs> but um, let's try this again. So analyze. We want it to stop before the Twixter stops. So there's probably a good spot. And that was, we'll see if that's solid. It might have been a wig little wiggly, but you might not notice it with the lock on. on. So after that, um, hit apply. And um, apply dimensions X and Y. And if you click on null you'll be able to see that the null follows it properly so now we want to add our lock on and I actually got these this lock on pack from Baker's Tuts um, so all credit goes to him I don't, I'm not quite sure if he made it but I got it from him so I'm gonna give him the credit and um, he's he got some amazing tutorials so I mean he's big so if you want to check him out it's uh, youtube.com slash Baker's Tuts so I'm gonna go ahead and drag the uh, lock on in the um, in the layer. By the way, I'll supply these lock-ons in the description. But like I said, they belong to Baker, so give him the credit. And now that I dragged it on the uh, on the composition, I'm gonna click toggle switches because it was on the wrong switch. I'm gonna change the uh, add or the blend mode to add. If you can't find that, right-click on it, and you can change the blending mode to add. So um, I mean, that's obviously too big. But um, let's go ahead and add, uh, drag this WYSIWYG to the null one. And as you'll see, it'll actually move, but it's obviously not motion tracked very well because it's not scaled down to the uh, scope. So press S and then scale it down. I'm going to scale it down to whatever will make it fit. Um, but let me, uh, let me show you a little trick at getting a little bit more realistic. Obviously, this is at an angle because you can see the inside of the scope here and you can't up top. So, you know, you're not looking straight at it. So this doesn't look too realistic right here. So what you're going to do is toggle switches again for me. And then I'm going to click on the 3D box up here. And then I'm going to press R. And that's going to bring up my orientation, my X, Y, and Z. Go to the beginning. Keyframe the orientation. And um, move this uh, just so it fits it better. Just so it's more realistic. And just like you're looking at it at an angle. So and then at this point, we want to um, f follow it and then keyframe it to where it'll still follow the scope so that it turns with the scope I mean obviously you can see more of the scope now so I'm gonna turn it like at zero here and um, so I mean that's a pretty pretty uh, decent track you know it gets a little off right here that's um, that's alright we're just gonna we're just gonna scale it down now so press S and uh, keyframe it right before you want it to stop right before he kills a person and then um, then just go ahead and set it to zero like 30 frames ahead so it'll go down like that so it comes out spins and then goes down and then the kill happens so I mean this looks a lot better with the color correction so let me go ahead and get into that I use magic bullet looks for my color corrections and I have a bunch of them in my presets folder and I'm just going to go ahead and add one to the clip itself. 
And um, we're going to add Candy by Baker. It's a pretty solid color correction. It's, it's got a lot of colors. <laughs> so, uh, um, and we're going to actually add a color correction, a separate color correction to the lock on. It looks better when it's like super bright and just looks good. So, um, I think we'll give it a cool glowing effect. I think that one looks cool. That looks like a cool glowing effect. So I'm going to press OK on that. And um, there we have it. Um, I'm going to go RAM preview this and just. Oh, actually, you know what? Here, let me show you a little tip here. Sometimes when you put a glow color correction on the. Um, on the lock-ons, you can see the uh, square on the outside. See that? You can see the square, and that's no good, really. So put it where you can see the square, and then uh, make sure you're selecting the lock-on layer. Take the pen tool and just um, make a circle. Wait, make a circle around the edges. Doesn't have to be perfect. This is actually going to be pretty bad, but um, for tutorial purposes. Yeah, just make a circle around the edges, and uh, it'll mask it out. But that obviously doesn't look too good. So come up to lock on, and um, press the down. Go to masks. Go to the mask one, and uh, change the feather. I'm gonna feather it up a uh, pretty good amount, maybe sixty. Yeah, uh, maybe more than that. Actually, a hundred. Okay, so let me RAM preview that, and you can no longer see the square. So that's good. And um, yeah, I'll be right back. All right, it's all RAM previewed out, and this is kind of what it will look like a little bit. You can spend a little bit more time positioning it so it doesn't um, scale in like it did like that. But um, yeah, so that's that's pretty much it. I'm sorry it was so long. It's kind of an advanced one. But uh, if this helped you in any way, please subscribe. Um, many tutorials soon to come. Peace out.